Why isn't it all right for black women to be angry? Why is it necessary for them to pretend that it doesn't hurt? And that's what they do all day, every day, in order to get along with people like you. Let's talk with Andrew Love. All it takes is one really good learning situation. One moment, and it can change your life forever. Amen. Yes. Color is important. It's important to be color, to appreciate it, and to realize that if it weren't for people like you, there would be no people like me, color-wise. Get that into our heads. White did not come first. White isn't here yet. Hmm. What we call black came first. Dark brown came first. The first modern human beings that evolved on this earth looked like you. They didn't look like me. They could not have survived if they had looked like me. And that means Jesus didn't look like me. That part. You know what? Well, indoctrination. Right indoctrination. indoctrination. Um, yeah. We just got to, We like you said, I mean, I agree. Yeah. We have to change yeah. how we're educating um, society and uh, our children. But you, know. but you know, you know as well as I do, that melanaceous and melanatic, melanotic people educate their kids all day. And when they come home at night, they have to re-educate and have to take out of those kids' heads a lot of what the teachers, the educators, so-called educators, have put into their heads. They have to say, wait a minute, now maybe she told you this, but mm -hmm. let's take a look at the map. Here's a here's a new map. Look at this Peter's projection map. Do you see where Greenland is? Mm -hmm. And the kids say, well, no, it's not right. And you say, no, this is right. See where the equator is? And the Peter's projection map is just one of the things that parents need to introduce to their children so that when the school tells them the wrong thing, the kids can go home and say, well, we learned such and such in school today. And the mother can point to the map on the wall and say, did you learn this? Because if you didn't learn this, they taught you the wrong thing today. Mm. And you need to remember that Mr. Trump was going to buy Greenland. Mm. Four years ago, yeah, he was going to buy Greenland, and somebody took him aside and said, uh, "You know, Donald, Greenland isn't as big as it looks on the map." They had to teach him the truth about the map, and he was what seventy six, seventy years old at the time. And they had to teach him the truth about the map. Do you think the schools failed him along the way someplace? Yeah, well, absolutely. Absolutely, and part of parents too. Well, yeah, but. Absolutely. Did you know the truth about the map? I did not. No, of course, but you don't know the truth. Education about starts in the home. You know, that's where I think. But, no, no. What you learn in the home, you have to build on it in the oh, classroom. Absolutely. But absolutely. you have to build. Yeah, but you have to build on a productive way. And right. some of the things that kids learn at home are the same things that their parents learned that was wrong, too. That's true. That's true. Say, that is true. That is true. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> that is very true. Sometimes you have to say, well, you're, well I don't like to, I don't want to argue with your dad, but here's a picture. You take this home and show it to your dad. You send home the Peter's projection map of the kid because he's just grinning all over his face. I'm going to show my dad this. And he takes it home and shows it to his dad. And then his dad called me and said, where'd you get that map? And I said, well, the address for them, I think you should do that. And instead of ranting and raving because I taught my kid the wrong thing, he said, I'm, we're going to have those maps in our house. That makes sense. Just that one little item could mm -hmm. say to a kid, my, my dad can teach me, but here's something I can teach my dad. I know that's right. I have another question, Jane. Uh, people don't even go hard to use the library. They might use Google. Why can't people go to the library anymore? No you know, library got old articles, old facts, old documentations. It, it's, it's almost like the library is not a place that people even want to go anymore. Well, but think about how most libraries, many libraries, maybe not the libraries that you know, but the libraries that I know. And when I was in high school, it was in one of the buildings in the high school building. And you had to tiptoe in there and you had to talk in very, very low tones. And you weren't allowed to go beyond a certain group of shelves. 
because that was above your intelligence level or above your the things you didn't need to know until you're older. So the library was not a place that was a welcoming environment when I was a kid. And as I grew up, and even now today, if I go to the libraries around me, uh, there are certain things you have to do, which automatically tells you you aren't really welcome there because you're going to take those books off the shelf and then somebody's going to have to replace them and put them back in order. It's what happens in libraries is oftentimes the result of the librarian who has forgotten that she is there to encourage people to read. Mm. But if you are keeping the books in order, you are less concerned with the people reading the books than you are with the show where the books are on the shelf. So it, whether or not you have a good experience with a library depends on whether or not you have a good experience with the librarian. Now, if she's there to encourage reading, that's going to be a terrific experience. If she's there to encourage that you don't make a mess in her in her domain, that's a whole different thing. But you talked Library. about right. You what? talked a little bit. Uh, you you asked Andrew. You said uh, the microfilm, the the articles, uh, um, and everything. The, the history, okay, the history. Um, and this is based on my experience, my observation is that young people, a lot of young people, they're not interested in history. You know, they're not interested in history. And kids are like, why do I, why do I care? This is what I care about right now. Um, this is what, why am I going back to the past? Um, because it dictates the future, but they don't understand how it's connected. Um, so they're not interested. So we have to be, as educators, we have to be innovative. I wasn't an active teacher. I made them active learners. Active learners. Yeah, the big, difference between, being a, yeah, the big difference between being an active teacher okay. and encouraging, encouraging kids. Right. You right. learn this, here's the way to learn it. You go and look at this book, and then mm -hmm. you get these materials, and you try to build what this man made or build something better and find out whether, whether what he did was really amazing or could any fit third grader do it and if you can't do it then somebody had more more ability than you have so if you want to get that ability then you've got to read this book and this book and this book and talk to these people about how to do that yeah and that's where and i honestly where believe john dewey was right when he said you have got to keep them moving yep yep and that's and that's what at the university of northern iowa where i got my education um, that's what we learned, that you encourage children to be active learners. The longer, the, the more involved they are in what they have to learn, the more they learn from it, and the easier it will be for them to learn. And the easier it will be for them to learn the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. But when, you know, I read the book, The School Book, years and years ago, and it was about classrooms in the 30s. And the principal said to the teachers, keep these kids in their desks. Don't let these kids get out of their desks. So that's the way they ran their schools in from the 30s to the 40s. Then came the Second World War. And then everything turned around so that everybody was active because we needed women to do things during the Second World War that they had never done before. And men who hadn't been able to get jobs and couldn't win the military took the jobs that those who went into the military had been doing. So it, up, it just totally changed the way we operated in this country. The, the Second World War was terrifically important in the way people treated one another and what they learned about one another during that war. So what, what do we need? Another war? No. no, but exactly. we could have one very easily if we don't vote carefully in November. Exactly, exactly. Yep. yep. I got you a question, Jen. Uh, what's going on with this Israel and Pakistan and this Russia thing? What's what's going on with all this? Okay, here's how to find out about that. Read the book, The History of Pakistan. I just I'm reading it right now. What's the name of it? It's about what has gone on in Palestine, and I remember when they divided Palestine and gave the Jews part, pushed the Palestinians off their land to make a place for the Jews who had suffered so hor horribly at the hands of Adolf Hitler. Wow. And now those Jews and that those men, those Palestinians in that little tiny piece of land are being murdered, so systematically murdered in order to get that piece of land back into back to the Jews. And they don't they refuse to let them have a land of their own. They have been working on statehood for all these years. It's mm -hmm. time for them statehood by now. It's been 70 years they've waited for statehood. I I have no patience, patience with Hamas. I have no patience with what, what the Jews are doing 
to the whole of Palestine, the whole of Palestinian up? people, because uh -huh. of what Hamas has been. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, no. I think it's. I think we had better understand the history of what went on there before okay. we criticize either one of them. But Netanyahu is going to have to go because I don't think he wants to remember what happened to the to the Palestinians in 1945. I don't think he wants to talk about that. I think he wants to deny it. Mm. Whole different. If you read this book about the history of Palestine, all of a sudden it's like. Why didn't I remember? Why didn't I remember that? Why am I so upset about people who want a state, who want statehood? Why does that upset me? When that's all we wanted, we white folks, when we came here, we wouldn't even give the Native Americans statehood. We gave them reservations in their own land, and mm -hmm. they still don't have statehood. We uh -huh. know how to deny people statehood. We've been doing it for how many years, and now we're talking about reparations for blacks. When are we going to have reparations for Native Americans? First do reparations for the First Nations people, then do reparations for blacks. I don't I, You see, blacks don't like to hear that. But mm -hmm. think about what we have done with the Native Americans. And think of what blacks people, black people, have been. They have cooperated with that. They didn't force, they didn't stand up. Wait, where, where the women's movement started? <laughs> They might have well have been carrying signs saying black women need not apply. Black women matter what? The women's movement was all about white women. You know, and I know it. Yeah. So, but, and now with reparations, we're talking about reparations for people whose land we didn't steal and whose children we didn't kill and whose husbands we didn't kill and whose women we didn't rape. We're talking about reparations for people that we brought here to work for us. Hmm. We should give reparations to the people whose land we stole. Give them the land that they own. <laughs> Washington Redskins. Washington Redskins. Mexicans. Well, Mexicans. Washington, D.C. Well, give it to them. Give them what they hand first, and then talk to, about reparations to me. Hmm. That okay. makes sense. That is good. That is a good one, because they did steal the land. <laughs> they should get reparations to people who stole the land from. They, yeah. Uh, Let's ask you a question. So what what is your definition of the word Indian? And when you say natives of this land, and is Indian. that just a particular color, or they just different colors of people? An Indian is somebody from India. Okay. The people that we called Indians were not Indians. That was a word that it was that Columbus came up with because he thought he had reached the east by sailing west. Okay. He was ignorant. He had a right to be ignorant in 1492, <laughs> but this is 2024. Let's call them indigenous people or, or African Americans because they too came from Africa. They did not, and this is going to make a whole lot of people angry, they did not come from Turtle Island. A young Native American girl did not dive, dive down to the bottom of the lake and grab a handful of mud and bring it up and construct an island out of it. That is not how it happened. People who we call black came from Africa at the same time that they were populating every every landmass on the face of the earth, and they populated this continent. Hmm. It's just it's just Native so, Americans, so, so Afri African Native Americans. Nobody wants like to you. admit we got to play that game. I don't play the game. They they're not going to use the word African Native American all in one sentence. That's 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 what I was getting at. They they just they're making you think. By using the word loose term as Indian, they ain't let you know the color of the of the nature of the pink. That's like I said, the, the original people. Uh, like I was telling people when they, when they, when they make them slaves, I said oh, a lot of people was already here. My color, they didn't have papers that made slaves and just traded them around, but it was already that, here. They weren't here from no that, boat. That's that's what we melanin. And a lot of people don't know. We adjust the environment to fit our needs. We'll call this these folks Indians because they don't look like us. And we'll do and the Columbus came here and found all these people who didn't look right because they didn't look white. And he captured a couple of them and took them back and showed them to the Pope. And the Pope said, Oh, these people aren't aren't Christians, therefore they must not be civilized. So he decided that the Native Americans of this continent weren't civilized because they were couldn't they weren't Christians. 
They kept them in that land for several years and took them back and showed them to the Pope. And they Christianized them, took them back and showed them to the Pope. And the Pope said, oh, they become Christianized. Therefore, they must be civilized. And he granted civilization, the granted the, the, made them civilized because he said they were civilized three years after he met them originally. That they weren't civilized until they become Christians. Now, think about that. And that's think amazing. That. Yeah, yeah. No, change the environment to fit your needs. If we the can best. Christian you, then you will think the way we do, and you will believe the same thing, same things that we do, and we can communicate with you. But if you're just going to talk about Mother Earth and Father Sky, we're uh -huh. not going to get to that. We're going to talk about Jesus, Joseph, and Mary, and not the Great <laughs> Spirit. <laughs> We have too much. We we have too much access. We've got too much access to. to so thank you, thank you, Jane, for pointing that out the clarifying it. Cause I, cause the reason I wanted to hear you say, cause I just say, that me as a man of color, if I tell black people, this is kind of strange the way we brainwash. If I tell black people, it's hard for a black person to, to accept the truth. We more than just what society has put us in a box to believe. But to hear somebody like you say, it, that's why a lot of people call you people. My color talk to you. It's, it's not normal to hear a lot of people your skin color tell the truth. Because if I say it, uh, Terry said it, they won't take it as serious because of no, the, the programming. We have taught people and we have deliberately, deliberately taught people that the whiter you are, the brighter you are. Right. You know that and I know that. And you know that if I, if my skin were a shade of brown, a dark shade of brown, I wouldn't have gotten away with doing blue-eyed, brown-eyed exercise in my classroom the day after Martin Luther King Jr. was killed. I might have lost my job, and I might have lost my life if I had been a woman of color. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm white. Right. So they will accept what I say. And we have brainwashed people into thinking that whiteness and rightness and brightness all rhyme. Right. White also rhymes with fight and fright and slight and spite. But we never think of that. We just think of if you're white, you're all right. If you're brown, hang around. If you're black, get back. If you're yellow, you're mellow. And if you're red, you're dead. And that's what school children have said to me. They get uh, right down to the knit on a net. And I say, wait just a minute. Whoa. And have groups of adults, will every white person in the room please stand? And they bounce up like they believe it. Well, every black person. They no, bounce. they're proud. They're proud. Yes. It, and that's it's ridiculous. <laughs> if they had a brain, they'd say, I'm not white. What's the matter with this bitch? And then right. they'd say, you know, <laughs> okay, we're not standing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now you finally decided it's not so bright to say you're white. That's what we've got to teach people. It's not so bright to say you're white. Here's the next thing you have to tell them. It's not because of the color of your skin. It's because of the ignorance of the person who sees your skin, the color of your skin, as a negative. Your skin color was the first. The first human beings looked like you. They didn't look like me. They looked like you. So skin color should not be seen as a negative. And we should not treat people because of our ignorance about thinking of skin color as either positive or negative. When somebody says to me, well, he just doesn't, he's doing that because of their, their skin color. I say, hell no, it's not. He's doing that because of his ignorance about skin color. You know, if you, no, if you are, you sit there in church on Sunday morning and there behind the pastor is a picture of Jesus Christ with light hair and light skin, kneeling like this and looking upward. While we all know that heaven isn't there, heaven is another dimension here. You turn the corner and you're in that other dimension. Nobody dies, people. Your physical body, your physical being dies because it it will. But your mind is pure energy. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. You, you need to remember that your mind. Why are you like you say? I. I, I no. no, so Andrew was what? talking about this earlier. Andrew. This, Andrew was talking about exactly what you're saying earlier. That's the exact same word. And he was telling me. Paula, you're breaking up. Any sense to you? No, 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 it you're does. No, no, he he was telling me earlier. He was telling me, at, like, 
I disagreed or something like and so when you just corroborated you just said pretty much the exact same thing that he well, said to me earlier and he's like I told you I'm like I never I never disagreed with you to begin with no nah, yeah well, well, I know you were doing multi things I know if you're listening because you're doing a whole lot of things yeah but I thought you hear it again you just you know I'm not making it up because I ain't know if you heard it before the energy of your mind was here before you were born it will be here after you're dead because your you, energy is neither created nor destroyed. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s energy is as alive today as it was when he was walking the, in this dimension. But we are still we are still repeating his words because they are going to be with us forever. Jesus was alive. He's still alive, but he isn't in this dimension. People pray all day and all night. Oh, God help me. And, I, and then they look at the and I'm thinking, don't look heavenward. There ain't no heaven up there. We've been it's there. Here. We've seen all these spaceships there, and they keep getting wrecked. I don't think it's Jesus. <laughs> I think we just refuse to admit. In the Bible, it says, for now, we see through a glass darkly. But eventually, and I don't remember the rest of the verse. Somebody look it up. But in the, in the, in the, eventually, it will all be clear. We will realize that we just turn into that other dimension. When, when our body dies, our mind keeps right on um, the and and that's hey if that weren't true you might as well burn every book that you've ever read because mm. everything you read in those books came out of somebody else's mind that's true and miss j that's, Eric, that's that kind of teaching that's first that kind of, 13 verse 12 yep we, and what does it say it says for now we see through a glass darkly but then face to face now i know in part but then shall i know even as also I am known. Right, right. Right now, we don't, you know, you you look at here and this is all you see. But when you take a breath, you don't see the air that you're breathing, mm. but it's keeping you alive. Right. Except in Iowa, if you breathe out in the wintertime, you can see it. Right. But, but most places you can't. But anyway, you don't. Energy is, it's always been there. It will always be there. It's the reason we are able to make a difference is because our energy affects other people and their energy. Yes. Absolutely. And that's what education ought to be doing yes. is energizing people's minds. Yes. That's what I do in my classroom. I mean, I, and it's, it's not easy because they don't let us, they, they make it very hard for us because again, what defines edu defined education back then is different than what defines it today. Everyone in the districts, the administration, they're concerned they have, standards um they have a whole curriculum that they want us to teach from it's it's very you know then we i mean i love my kids like we rock and roll but like they don't make it easy for us they don't make <laughs> it easy for us. Well, what you, you have to sneak stuff in you know but what you do is go into your classroom in the morning and shut the door and teach yes that's what i do I, I, yes and i exhaust myself in. And when the, when the principal walks by and sees what's going on, he sees kids acting and he sees the teacher back there in that corner. She isn't sitting at her desk. She's with a bunch of kids. And this bunch of kids are doing something else. No, that bunch is doing something else. And then he goes and walks on down the street and thinks, I'm down in the hall and thinks I'm going to have some trouble over this. She's doing things that's going to irritate somebody. I'm going to have to defend her again this week. And that, <laughs> that's me that would that be say, me keep it up keep it up Your that kids would be me the, right, the kids have the right to have an educator who allows them to be educated and to educate one another and to educate themselves and to be able to say i know where to find this information without the teacher giving it to me i'm going to look it up and i'm going to find it someplace and i'm not going to find it in my cell phone right <laughs> that part miss jane this is why they kick you out of church you're not going with the Christianity program. We want to hear about you saying that you will live forever outside the Bible. You supposed to be waiting on white Jesus, Easter Bunny, Santa Claus to come resurrect you and help you. You can't be teaching. That's why they kick you out of church. You know too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, if I knew enough, I'd keep my mouth shut and just follow the party line. No, absolutely that's what, not. That that's, isn't, that's what they I, believe. I, I watch my, my, watch my sister follow the party line. I watched the teachers around me follow the party line. I thought, well, 
for an well, angle. If you want rote learning, that's good. But if you want kids to relate to what's going on, you better have them use their hands and their heads and their feet and do some interesting things that will they will produce something that matters. Yes. And they did. Yes. Be the change. Be you the want change. To be. change. Want to be. Yeah. You Ms. want to change. Yeah. Absolutely. And if the other teachers don't like you, <laughs> that's unfortunate, but they have no taste. And if the principal says, are you sure what you're doing is going to work? You say, wait until, wait and see. That's so funny. That's so funny. When I told him what I, I'm not moving forward to my kids know, and they've at least by 80% have mastered, you know, the, the content. And he's like, and that's working for you. Mm -hmm. uh, 85%. It's working. Yeah, it's working. It's working for me. Yeah, 85% is a good percentage. What you... Well, I'm just saying, why move forward? What are we moving forward for if they, they don't understand? Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. There's, a, there's a difference between a teacher and an educator. You teach dogs tricks. You teach the men, members of the military how to behave. You teach your parrot to talk. But you educate children. You lead them out of ignorance. Educators are very different from teachers. Teachers dispense facts and figures and get the kids ready for the end of your testing. Educators lead them out of ignorance so that they can pass those end of year tests yeah. with flying colors, but they don't pay any attention to it because they know it's all a bunch of stuff. But they can do it because they want to get through. They get got to get that test finished so that they can get into a book <laughs> and read something. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. See, see, we... we now I think I discussed it. I have to throw some little stuff in there. So now we get a little mix between politics, religion, and, sh and spirituality. Because they all go hand in hand. If you want to talk about politics and religion, you got to get spirituality. You can't separate the two. They, they keep you, everything okay, you, refuse, you refuse to talk about politics and religion because they are not the same thing. And if you're going to deal with the earthly matter, deal with the earthly matter. But if you're going to deal with the spiritual matter, take it out of politics. Exactly. And take politics out of that. You've got no business. You've got no business inserting religion into the education system. Exactly. It's a good idea to act like a Christian. But if you're going to judge your kids, then you aren't going to act like a Christian. Judge not that you be not judged. That's not what you're here for. Hmm. We are going to close up, wrap up. Um, I want to thank you so much for. Go, did you want to say something? Andrew? You go ahead. You go ahead. I just want to thank you so much for taking the time um, this Sunday to chat with us uh, and to enlighten us and to inspire. To well, some, be, some people will say she frightened us. Good. But the, the future, it looks like you. It doesn't look like me. That's it. The future is in the hands of people who look like you. Women who are melanaceous. And men who are melanaceous and melanotic. That's the way it is. And it will be better. We've got to get students accustomed to seeing people who are of a different hue being equally human. Yes. Right. Who has nothing to do with human. They're spelled differently. Yes. What's the difference? H U E is for hue and H U M A N is human. Right. Hue. Different hue. Different tone. Different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Don't. don't. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I thank appreciate you. you calling. Yeah, thank, thank you, Ms. Giant. Thank you. Well, like to say to all the people. The biggest thing you can do to change this system is vote in November. You have eight months to guarantee that we have a democracy for the rest of our lives. That okay. is the only thing you have to do this year is guarantee that people vote Democrat because, because it will save this democracy. This democracy is too precious to lose because of a fool or because of laziness or because of people who think one vote doesn't count. One vote counts. Every vote counts. Go to the polls and vote this man out of the, the situation in which you might be seen as less than because you don't match that picture. Uh -huh.